The Economist reported in 2019 that North Africa enjoys near universal access to electricity. Yet more than half of the sub-Saharan population of 600 million people live in the dark. The Brookings Institute reported that sub-Saharan Africa's current average 43% access rate to electricity is half of the global access rate of 87%. This can hinder the provision of basic services since half of the secondary schools in sub-Saharan Africa do not have power. Many clinics and hospitals in the region also lack access to reliable electricity. Most sub-Saharan African countries lack a sufficient and reliable national power generation capacity, transmission grid or distribution network. Many power grids have a power station availability of less than 65% and many have serious power surges which can damage sensitive equipment connected to it. The lack of a reliable power supply has serious national repercussions, including a drag on GDP growth and wealth creation. Many millions of homes are unable to power a refrigerator, light bulb, TV, or even a PowerPoint for a laptop or to recharge a phone, services that we all take for granted in more developed countries. This power shortfall has complicated the task of improving national living standards and for bridging the digital divide by making it difficult to connect schools and homes to the internet. Even medical clinics function suboptimally as they are unable to operate refrigerators to maintain the low temperatures required for the storage of vaccines and blood plasma, thus impacting infant mortality rates. Reinvestment in the national power system in some countries has led to double inflation rate increases in per unit power costs, making it unaffordable for many families. This is compounded by a culture of non-payment for services, which results in power utilities being underfunded. Please consider how one could address this challenge in a continent with over a billion people. Although private, fossil, Power generation projects have accelerated and a renewed focus on renewable wind and solar farm power generation has occurred, none has made a significant impact due to the challenges in transmitting the power from remote generation sites and then distributing it amongst millions of homes in cities and rural areas. This is the classic last mile challenge at play. The difficulty in distributing services from a local hub which afflicts services like e-commerce and telecommunications. A solution has appeared in the form of domestic, off-grid, solar photovoltaic systems. These are standalone systems that are not connected to the grid and that only power a single home. The system itself is a rather simple configuration with four key components, namely a solar panel array mounted externally on the roof of the home, an inverter and battery set to create a direct current supply for storage and to thereafter convert it to alternating current for use a few power points and finally a processor to manage the system and connect to the central management system via the mobile network. Solutions such as these have proliferated across Africa and now power millions of homes in a sustainable manner. The system does not however come without its challenges. Due to the lack of capital, many of these systems are sold on a rent to own model. This means that the buyer makes a down payment and then repays the balance over a few years while at the same time making use of the service. Transactionally, this means that the user pays a deposit and takes the system home to install. The risks in this model are that the user does not pay, the system is not used optimally, the panels are stolen, or that the system malfunctions. The system is therefore supplied with a series of IoT sensors and field devices that communicate via the mobile network to the host system. There is a promising possibility that the rapid rollout of eSIM technology will allow for the easier rollout of future IoT solutions with a software-based SIM solution. The first problem, i.e. that of non-payment, is solved by allowing users to make payments for the services via their cell phones, using airtime as a top-up mechanism, a technique which is effectively prepaid electricity. This is a very commercially viable and technically feasible use case for an IoT solution to address. This system works even if the user does not have a smartphone, which are not as prevalent in some African countries as they may be in more developed nations. If the user transfers airtime to the supplier, the system continues to function. Non-payment means that the system firstly sends out a reminder, and then if ignored, 
proceeds to shut itself down until payment recommences. Theft of the solar array is addressed in a similar manner, as the panel identity is bound to that of the inverter. Both devices have intelligent IoT chips installed to identify and bind the systems together. Any attempt to connect the panel to another inverter will trigger an alarm on the system and alert the service provider. The location of a stolen panel is possible due to the embedded chip in the panel itself that will communicate once it is connected to another system and therefore the mobile network. The IoT system operates as a closed loop system interfacing the discrete components, that is the roof mounted power panel embedded in some cases with an eSIM, connected via a power cable to the inverter which is also fitted with a SIM or eSIM if available, and then the processor in the inverter connects remotely to the central cloud-based real-time monitoring application either via the home Wi-Fi solution or using the SIM to connect via the mobile network and or locally to the user's phone via Bluetooth. The user's phone can thus have connectivity to both the local IoT installation as well as to the online real-time monitoring service provider's application that is cloud-based. This configuration allows the service provider to monitor the operation of the system and to resolve issues that can be dealt with remotely. The user is kept informed on the status via messages sent to their cell phone or in-app messaging. An example could be warnings when there are not enough sunny days and the batteries are running dangerously low. More sophisticated versions are able to connect to the user's smartphone via Bluetooth or home Wi-Fi to allow the users to remotely manage their system health status and even adjust the appliances that are able to connect in order to create greater value from the system. The most sophisticated systems allow you to switch between solar and grid power when available to recharge batteries for more intensive evening use. This use of IoT technology in simple systems illustrates the power of the solution set to solve overly complex business, social and personal use cases in a very simple and reliable manner.